Today, the topic is energy. What is energy? Simply put, energy is the ability to get things done. That's all. Today, I want to show you that everything that we'll ever need has already been supplied and that we've all been given enough energy to find that supply. Every living creature on earth has been given enough energy to accomplish everything and anything that they need to accomplish so that they can thrive, not just survive. And we humans are no different. If everything's been given and we have all the energy available to us that we need, then what's the problem at times and so we'll get to some of that so find your tree and we have a skinny squirrel that visits our yard every morning and i really have no idea why uh, because we don't have any fruit trees we don't really have many trees at all and uh and i don't feed the animals uh, but this squirrel is alert quick and twitchy and uh and he's sort of like a teenage boy. He, he checks out every yard, or just, he, like a teenage boy would check out a refrigerator. Every time walks past to see if there's actually something different in there. And, uh, and he does this every day for even the remote possibility of previously undetected food. And he then scampers along the fence line, goes to the next yard to do the same thing. But in another part of town, there's a street line with huge oak trees. And uh, they're heavy laden with acorns. And I once saw a squirrel that was so fat <laughs> from the abundance of acorns that he probably couldn't even climb a tree. And uh, as I walked near to this, this portly uh, consumer of acorns, he slowly dragged his furry belly across the sidewalk, and then he put his. Uh, then he, he he slowly just walked his 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 front paws up on that tree to where he was almost stretching, and he uh, and it was sort of like a symbolic uh, climbing gesture, and uh, and so he just sat there and stared at me, and he turned his head as I got closer and looked at me and was like, really. You really going to make me cl climb this thing? Not going to happen. Uh -huh. And so as I walked by, uh, he didn't move, but I sort of thought imperceptibly that he sucked his cheeks in just ever so slightly <laughs> as he did his, his belly. And, uh, but he, he was sort of there motionless at the base of his massive tree, his tree. And if you think about it, an acorn is nothing more than an energy source, as is all food. And uh, God's given each of us our tree. We just need to put in the necessary heart and energy in order to find it. It has to be there if he supplied all our need. And once we, we uh, find that tree, then we're going to add to our stockpile of energy of which we need a massive amount to make it through this life. I was listening to a show and they're talking about people now. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's very common for people to live into their 90s, which wasn't the case even a few years ago, which means people retirement savings, uh, is that going to carry them forward enough? It's a whole different way of thinking now when people have to plan out their life. They have to plan to live a long time. And, uh, but that being said, won't, doesn't God have that already figured out? And can't he show us how to do that? Yes. But we have to put in the necessary energy in order to make it happen. It's not just kneeling on our knees next to our bed with tears beating on our forehead and our, our knuckles white in the prayer in prayer mode, you know, like that portly uh, squirrel. Um, here's a, a, a verse I want to read it. It's Matthew 4, 5, 45. And God said that he maketh his son to rise on the evil 
and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. See, anyone on earth and everyone on earth has the ability to prosper because everything we need really starts with water and the sun. Isn't that what scientists look for in a, in a planet? They're, they're still looking for a planet that has liquid water and it's, it's, it has a hard surface. It's made of rock, typically a molten core, you know, so it has, has heat. And, just, and, all, and it has to be within a certain band of temperature. So it's just, it's just, it's just water, light, which is temperature. So it's, it's not much. And right here it says the whole thing. Maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. So many Christians fail to advance in their life because they hang on to something stupid they did in the past. There's nothing you can do about that. What's the point of even having Jesus Christ? We're forgiven, so forgive yourself, and then we can move past a point. You know, um, see, the context of this verse adds a layer of love, which is really the greatest power. The greatest energy source in the universe is love. And so I'm going to read from the message, Matthew 5, 43 through 47. You're familiar with the, the old written law, love your friend and its unwritten companion, hate your enemy. I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer. For then you're working out your true self, your God-created selves. This is what God does. He gives his best, the sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone, regardless, the good and bad, the nice and the nasty. You know, if all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anybody can do that. If you simply, simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner can do that. See, live above the norm. Live above the norm, and then you're going to see your abundance. You always have to do a little more than you're doing now if you want change, right? Change to change. See, God will make it rain abundance upon us as we put in the right amount of energy, the right amount of love to make things happen. See, we keep seeking until we find our tree. Everybody's path through life is different. Everybody's journey is different. Um, put in the energy to find your tree. Crack the code. Have you ever, uh, have you cracked the code to your prosperity? You know, have you deciphered the path to locate your excellent adventure? And we're going to find out that this what a couple of verses that we've been taught so many times um, really doesn't mean what we think. Well, I'll get to that in just a minute. See, as we put in the proper amount of energy, God's going to help us reach our destined destination. See, every rich person on earth is well aware that the universe is absolutely and totally designed for him or her to prosper. They totally believe it. They figured it out. They cracked that code. The same thing works in, with our physical selves. You know, remember that, um, that verse that tells us that God supplies everything that, that's necessary for your lives, whether we've been good or whether we've been bad. We just read that a moment ago. You know, uh, I was thinking about how uh, um, they also figured that they have to put in the proper amount of energy in order to make anything profitable happen. Usually things don't just happen. Sometimes they do, but usually they don't. Um, it usually takes more energy than the normal person is willing to put out. Because they've got other things to do. have got shows to watch, tunes to listen to. 
got to jog around the block, you know, got to watch the birds, you know, whatever, whatever we do, you know, you'll find that the people who are the most successful, they, they utilize their time a whole different way. And sometimes it's not worth it to us, you know, but that's how they, but it works in any aspect. That's what, that's the point I want to get to, you know, put in the energy and crack the code. Now our prosperous journey. And here's a, a couple of other verses that point to the energy that we're going to need through this trip through life. And, uh, and these verses have been taught in a very limited fashion. And, I, and, and you'll, you'll understand. Um, 3 John 2 from the King James. Most of us know this. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Very common. And I've taught that for, for years. You know, God promises to supply your prosperity and supply your health. But there's more to this. And, of course, you know the, the caveat in there, like your, own, like your soul prospers. But uh, here's the same verse in the Amplified. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. And see, we seem to limit our thinking of this verse exclusively to the terms of health and finance. But it's far more than that. Um, the word prosper, and just look this up if you want. Go online, it's easy. means to have a prosperous journey. To find success along the way. Or find your tree. To succeed in reaching our destination or goals. The word prosper means to help you find your success, to help you reach your destination and enjoy the journey. See, to prosper means to help you find enough energy to enjoy your journey. That's what that word prosper means. That's everything in your life because your whole life is a journey. It's your children. It's you. It's your parents. You know, it's, it's your friends. It's your job. It, it's everything. Everything that's attached to you is your journey. See, energy is everywhere. Remember, what is energy? It's anything that gives us the ability to do anything. You know, everything that happens in the universe, from the sprouting of a seed to an earthquake to an amazing miracle, involves energy. And energy cannot be destroyed. but it can be transformed or used. Remember the law of the conservation of energy you learned about in elementary school in sixth grade or something? And uh, energy can be used, but it can never be used up. It can never be used up. Um, food is nothing more than stored energy from an acorn to a cookie. It's just stored energy. That's all it is. Now, the reason I'm telling you this stuff is because in, in these terms of food or whatever that are, are condensed forms of energy, um, there's other things out there that give us the, the energy so that we can accomplish tasks. I'll explain some of those in a little bit here. Um, at times I look at a cookie knowing that it contains 150 calories, about. And I know that it takes one mile of running for me to burn 150 calories. So... That would be 10 miles for 10 cookies. I ate four miles worth of snacks before the meeting started. <laughs> you know, and you, so you ask yourself, is it worth it? And sometimes yes, but usually no. Um, our cars burn energy stored in gasoline or diesel, which in turn takes us to work or shopping you see that that energy has been stored in the earth for millions and millions of years and and i believe we'll have enough of that energy until we find an alternate energy source i mean god set this up it's nothing to be afraid of and to freak out about god supplies the need people didn't need it the petroleum products for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Now we do. 
like it or not. See, wind farms convert the wind's energy into mechanical energy as those giant propellers, they, they turn these, they spin these giant turbines, which in turn spin these giant generators, which turns wind into electricity. A solar panel, like you see on houses and buildings, they convert um, sunlight, which is radiant energy, into electricity. Um, here's something that might make more sense to you. If I want to build my business, which I do, um, I must put forth the necessary energy to convert someone else's money into my money. Isn't money just another form of energy? It gives you the ability to accomplish something. And the more you have, the more you can use, right? The more you, more you can utilize. It's all it is. It's just energy. That's all we're transferring here. I heard this young lady the other day talking about how uh, this dog was good energy for her. And I thought, it sounds very uh, modern, but I understand what she means. It does something for her this certain dog that she had. Um, it's good energy. You know, sometimes, you know, there's a lot of things that give energy. Money's one of them. The coolest thing is that when we've run out of the necessary energy to accomplish a, a specific task, which we all run into at times, we hit roadblocks. There's an alternative source of energy supplied by the universe, supplied by the creator, supplied by God that can help us over that hump too. It has to be there. And we just need to learn how to focus our remaining energy, and this is the hard part, so that we can, we can utilize that supernatural power source as well. It takes energy to tap into a supernatural power source. And but we're, what I'm saying is we are set up for success. We're all, each and all, set up for success. You know, how many of you have heard stories where a miraculous thing occurred at just the right time? We all have, right? We've, we've seen them probably, those kind of things. Or where a person dug into some, some reservoir so deep within them they were able to accomplish what seemed like an a, a impossible task. We love stories like that. Well, they, tap into, they tapped into some, some type of energy or they could not have done that, be it emotional or spiritual. They did something. Like, like these ultra marathoners who run 100 miles or more. At some point, their body runs out of fuel, usually less than 100 miles. And, uh, and they run out of glycogen. They run out of all their stores. They have nothing left. And what they say you do is you just keep moving. Your body can do a lot more than you think it can do. You just keep moving till you cross the finish line. And it's hard to do, you know, when you're when everything's screaming stop. You know, why people do that? Well, uh, Ephesians 3.20 from the Amplified, very common verse. Now to him who, in consequence of the action of his power, that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers desires thoughts hopes dreams that's now that would be that that last portion right that has to be in the spiritual I'll read it from the message. God can do anything, you know. <laughs> Far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. His spirit deeply and gently within us. See, God already knows what we need. He already knows. He knows everything. And he also has heard us pray about it for 30 years or 50 years or 10 years, however old you are, you see. And the cool thing is he has already supplied it. 
And it's not a lie, folks. That's not just just hooky pooky, you know, Christian mumbo jumbo to get you staying in some church. You see, it's a fact, it's a truth, it's a reality. But for some reason, we're distracted from this reality. Why? I don't know. No. See, the people who prosper has figured out how to glean the sun and glean the rain that God has given. And all we need to do is put in the necessary amount of energy. That's all. All you need to do is put out the necessary energy and you can have everything you want into teaching. (laughs) Okay, but I mean, if it was that easy, everybody would do it. Remember what I said, some people have figured it out, the prosperity piece. Some people have figured out the health piece. They got cured of cancer, they got cured of this or that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it has to be the friendship piece. Some people have figured that out. The mental health piece, it's a hard one because sometimes we're trapped in our own heads. It's hard, or we've been raised so crazy, you know, or something horrible happened, it's hard. But there has to be a way. It takes energy, 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 energy. Okay, uh, let me see here. Um, see, it takes a god awful amount of energy each day in this 21st century um, to run our cars, our ovens, our cell phones, our, the cell towers, satellites, the heat to heat our houses. Um, to have water pumped in, to have sewage. I mean, it takes a god-awful amount of, of human kilowatts. I mean, if, if you think about all the energy it takes for you to live your life, it's amazing. Don't they call it the carbon footprint or whatever, you know, nowadays? But, but you think about, a, think about a caveman. They just had food. That was it. Acorn, Mm. good. And then all of a sudden they find this thing, they they see this this thing, this tree burning and there's heat and it's like, mmm, fire, good. And now I can move up north where it's cold because I know fire, you know. And so then people migrated where they could. It changed everything. They start using all this natural resources. You see, all this stored energy in wood. And then coal they learned. And all this, then, then they learned to harness steam in the late 1700s, early 1800s, where they could get it to move something in, in a certain direction instead of just go off into the atmosphere. And then came the internal combustion engines. Then space. You know, I mean, it's, it's amazing what has happened once we've learned to harness energy. But now the more we do it, the more we need it. And uh, so, see, we're surrounded by and have access to energy beyond our wildest dreams. And we need it. We want it. You know, get your stack back. My grandfather was a vice president of the General Electric Company, and he was well off, to say the least. And Josephine and I went one time to visit him at his home on this island off of the Texas coast. And he would introduce us to his neighbors. And all they ever yacked about was money, all these people. And all of them were multimillionaires, everybody. And when we got out of earshot from, from the, the neighbor we just visited, he would tell us how much money they have and how they earn their money. And I'm sure they did the same about him. And... Uh, you know, and, and it was funny. All I remember of them talking about was money and the, and the search for how to accumulate money. And that had been their sustained energy focus probably their entire adult lives. And everyone was crazy rich. And one older gentleman uh, we had talked to, he began to tell us how he made his million. He said, well, you take your stack of money and you invest it in this and you invest it in that. And before you know it, and my grandfather cut him off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, he said, uh, he, he said, well, how did you get that first stack? 
And the guy looked down and he goes, that's the hard part. That's the hard part. That first stack. The first stack is always the hard part. It takes the most energy, the most work. It's like pushing a car up a hill before you can ride it down. Money will start working for you if you just get that first stack. And on the same visit, my grandfather, right after that, he he told us that if all the wealth on the earth was taken from everybody and then redistributed evenly amongst the population, where everybody had exactly the same amount, he said in a year's time, the people who had the big stacks of money would have their stack back because they understand money and they know how to get it. Now, that may not be your life goal, is to make money. It's just an example here of energy. Um, You know, they know how much energy it takes to get and to keep the money. It takes energy to keep it, too. What about us? The rich know how much energy it takes to get and to keep money. Anyone on earth can prosper if they put in the necessary heart and energy. Could it be education? Yes. Could it be getting to know the right people? Yes. Could it be being friendly? Yes. You know? I mean, I mean, you feel there's so many. It could be a lot of things. A certification. Getting in shape. You know, taking up certain hobbies. It could be, what does it take for you to reach your goal? What does it take to have a prosperous journey? If God's already supplied it, what will it take for us to enjoy it. Put in the necessary work. Quote, Continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking our potential. Winston Churchill. Quote, Full effort is full victory. Mahatma Gandhi. Quote, effort only fully releases its reward after a person refuses to quit. Napoleon Hill. The last one, freedom from effort in the present merely means that there has been an effort stored up in the past. Theodore Roosevelt. You know, if you're able to to not put in the effort now, you've put in the effort at some point, or somebody else has for you. Oh, it's all about energy. Isn't that what God is? It's all about energy, folks. And if you can learn to understand and tap into the energy that's available to you, you'll have a prosperous journey. Matthew 6, 25 and 26 from The Voice. Here's the bottom line. Do not worry about your life. Don't worry about what you will eat or what you're going to drink or what you will drink. Don't worry about how you clothe your body. Living is about more than merely eating. And the body is about more than dressing up. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not store food for winter. They don't plant gardens. They, don't, they do not sow or reap. And yet, they are always fed because your heavenly Father feeds them. And you are even more precious to him than a beautiful bird. If he looks after them, of course, he will look after you. See, that's how simple it is in God's eyes. He takes care of our everything. He takes care of every living creature, even me, even you. That's it. But we have to put out the necessary energy to get it. It's already there, but we have to take on the energy. We have to find a way to do what we really want to do. Um, If that chubby squirrel could wax uh, philosophic, he would say, be the tree. Be the tree. It's my tree. It's my life. 
you know, put in the energy. Now, I'm sure you guys have all heard about the bar-tailed godwit. And uh, this bird has the longest known nonstop flight of any migratory bird. And they fly without landing or stopping, not to eat and not to rest, for about 7,000 miles. And they fly direct from the far northern hemisphere to New Zealand and back each year. Each bird loses half of their body weight en route. One tagged female was tracked by satellite, and they tracked her flying nonstop for nine days, covering 7,258 miles. That's over 800 miles a day. See, we don't even like to drive that much in one day, 800 miles. Imagine driving for nine days without stopping, resting, or eating. I remember driving across country uh, for a straight 48 hours, only stopping for gas, no food, and no sleep. I was totally useless <laughs> when, I, when I reached my destination. <laughs> totally useless. And that was only 48 hours. Nine days. But that is their expected energy expenditure for them to survive. And to thrive. It's not ours. That's what a bar-tailed Godwood has to do twice a year. Imagine losing half your body mass. Some people would like to, but most of us couldn't. We, could, we, would be, we wouldn't be alive if we did. You see, they have to fly 7,000 miles twice per year nonstop in order to get to their happy feeding and breeding grounds. How far are you willing to fly? How much energy are you really willing to put out? Because if you're not, if you're not seeing what you need to see, it just means you haven't, you haven't applied enough energy. That's all it means. It's all about energy. How much energy are you really willing to expend to reach your goals, to get your prayers answered? You know, to fill your bucket list. You see, the amount of energy you put out is how far you're going to go. You know, how much energy are we really willing to expend to reach our life goals, to find our health? to find a mate, to find our wealth, to find anything. You see, every creature on earth, including us, has an expected energy expenditure in order to have their need met. And see, if we want, if we want abundance, then we have to expend more energy. It's just the way it is. People just think they can pray and it's magically going to appear. Sometimes. But that, is, that usually, is that the norm? No, it's not the norm. It can happen, but we should do everything humanly possible to, toward our goal. See, God takes care of all his creatures that put in the work. And even birds don't get a handout. Well, sometimes they do, I guess, if you have, there's a feeder in your yard. But why should we expect one? And that's not the only place they hit either. You see, they work hard to have their, their needs supplied. Josephine's grandma, she was an Italian immigrant who arrived in the States just before the Great Depression. Great time. Great timing. You know. and, uh, and she used to tell Josephine and I, God helps of those who help of themselves. God helps of those who help of themselves. You see? And she's right. I used to think differently. No, God, he supplies everything. Yeah, but he expects you to do something. Help yourself. Help yourself. Have you ever seen an adult migratory bird just stop in your yard and just lay down in the cool grass, you know, sucking down a five-hour energy drink? And just waiting for you to put a little plate of food and shove it just close enough to their fat, lazy beak so they can drop their head and suck in a couple of kernels of grain. You see, 
No. They put in the work. The geese, they fly a long way, typically. You know, I had a friend who worked at a weight loss nursing home. And she had one client that was so heavy that she couldn't lift her arms up to feed herself. Her arms were so heavy. And this lady would beg and eventually demand my friend to feed her. Feed me! Because she was so big, she couldn't, eat, she couldn't feed herself. That's a lot of stored energy, folks. <laughs> In fact, it's too much stored energy <laughs> when you can't move, when it takes a forklift, you know. So, uh, you know, that's the whole lesson today is put in the necessary heart and energy to get what you need and want. See, if we hear ourselves praying for the same thing over and over and over and over and over, we haven't yet put in the necessary energy. Or we've used all our energy up, which usually is not the case. Matthew 6, 27 through 34 from the message. Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? All this time and money wasted on fashion, do you think it takes that much, makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. They never primp or shop. Have you ever seen color and design quite like it? The 10 best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. I had a friend who lived around the corner from me when I was growing up, when I was a teenager. And uh, one summer, this kid grew nine and a half inches and put on 60 pounds. He was unrecognizable by the end of summer. And his growth changed his life, and it changed the people who wanted to, to hang out with him. He went from a cute little girl catcher to just this big mammoth guy in one summer's time. See, our growth and our energy beyond the norm is what changes our lives. You know, how big of a growth spurt do you want? Verse 30, if God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do his best for you? What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. And don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. See, God takes care of all his creatures. You know, from the ant to the paramecium to the bacterium to the condor to the godwit to the human, to the Christian, to the non-Christian, to the good people, to the bad people. That's his job. God is a giving machine. God is a loving machine. Verse 34, give your entire attention, attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Bad things are going to happen. It's promised. But deliverance is also promised. If there was going to be no sickness, then why is health promised? Right? Up your wish list. I'm going to read one verse from 2 Chronicles 1.7. I'm going to read it from the Common English Bible. The Common English. I say. That night God appeared to Solomon and said, Ask whatever you wish and I will give it to you. Ask whatever you wish and I'll give it to you. Imagine if the God of the universe, 
the owner of the whole universe, the creator of all things, the supplier of all needs, the one who inhabits eternity, the one who has a thousand years to take care of your today, who has all the time in the world to make sure that every one of your needs is met. If he popped up into your family room while you're watching your flat screen television and said to you, what do you wish for? What do you wish for? What's one thing you really want? What do you really want? What do you really, really, really need and want in your life? See, if for some reason we don't see or we're not able to find what he's already supplied, if we just don't see those treasures that are stored for us along our amazing journey through this amazing life, it may mean we're not looking in the right places. It also means we're not advancing in our life and career. We've just hit a, a stopping spot, put the brakes on. You see, or we're just not putting out enough energy, the necessary energy. See, God does grant wishes and prayers. What do you keep asking for? If you keep asking for the same thing over and over, shouldn't that be a priority in trying to figure a way to get it? Especially if you've been doing it for years. Then it may not be anything that's going to happen miraculously. It may be something that you can figure out how to put the energy into getting. Just saying. Three men were stranded on a desert island when a bottle washes up to the shore. And when they uncork the bottle, they're crazy happy, and this genie appears. Whoa, you know, who wouldn't like that? And he offers three wishes. And uh, the, first, uh, the first one wishes that he could be, he could go to Paris. And then the genie snapped his fingers and, and poof, he's gone. He's near the Eiffel Tower. And uh, the second man said, hey, hey I, me likes that. He goes, I want to be a Hollywood movie star. And then snap, he disappears from that, that deserted desert island. And he's on a movie set acting. And uh, the third man, he's now alone on this tiny little island. And he looks around and he goes, I wish my friends were back. <laughs> one day a genie appeared to a California man and offered to grant him one wish. And the man said, I wish that you would build a bridge from here to Hawaii so I can just drive there. Anytime I want. And the genie said, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a lot of resources. That's a crazy request. You know, think about... Think about what it would take to build for me to, even me, a genie, to make that happen. Why don't you try to pick something else? And the guy pondered and he thought, uh, okay, I wish for complete understanding of women and how to make a woman truly happy. The genie was silent for a minute and then said, so how many lanes did you want on that bridge? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. The whole universe was designed so we could enjoy our journey through life. It's up to us. How much energy are we really willing to put out? You know, Solomon didn't ask for, for more money. He didn't ask for good health. He didn't ask for a long life. He didn't ask for fame or fortune. He didn't ask to live forever. He simply asked for the wisdom and knowledge so he could help God's people. Period. That was the end of Solomon's wish list and the beginning. That was his life's goal at that point in his life. And he wanted the knowledge and ability to help God's people. And I was thinking, what would his friends have said had he told them what, he, what his one wish from God was? And they would have gone, what? Like that squirrel, really? 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 You know, is it, is, you, is it based on service or self? Because love is usually giving. So if our life is just, if, if we're not getting any traction, maybe we need to just spread out and try to help somebody else. Remember that guy I told you, I called him Crazy Chris? 
about a year ago, I think I used that example. And this guy had a severe case of PTSD. Couldn't talk a, a sentence without jumping to another sentence. And it, it was hard to understand. And uh, when this last year, he called me up and he said, hey, I, I uh, uh, need you to come over and do a job. And I said, Chris, you sound coherent. What happened? He goes, well, thank you very much for noticing. <laughs> and I said, I said, what happened? He goes, oh, I started going to such and such a clinic, and I thought they'd put him on some drugs or a certain treatment package, some brainwave scan and, you know, poking needles in him or something. And, and uh, I said, what, what happened? What did they do? And he said, he said, I'm not going there for treatment. He goes, I, I go there to help people who are more seriously handicapped than me. And I found my deliverance. Sometimes we've got to live outside ourselves. It's hard to do. Hard to do, especially when we don't feel good. You know, inside or outside. And um, so, you know, I know a girl who was raised very rich. And this girl amazed me over and over again in the, in the few years I, I knew her. And uh, everywhere she went, somebody would give her things like a tickets to the ball game. I remember one time she goes, she goes, Mark, do you, uh, your son's going to college. Does he need a couch? And I said, yeah. I said, I said, would you buy another one? No, I didn't buy one. I walked into the furniture store and I was a 10,000 customer and they gave, just gave me one, any, co any couch I wanted. And I said, this is crazy. This stuff happens to you all the time. I said, what's up? And she goes, I expect it. I was raised to expect it. And that's where I started thinking, expect abundance. You might just get it. It's just a mindset. It's an energy set. Reset your energy for you millennial thinkers, you generation Xers, and you baby boomers, you know, whomever you are, you greatest generation. Reset your energy and reset your life. You know, that, that's God's whole wish for us on our journey through life is that we find whatever we need along the way. Now, here's this is called the wishing doing gap by a bloggist named Seth Godin. Quote, it would be great to be picked, to win the random lottery, to have a dream come true. But when we rely on a wish to get where we want to go, we often sacrifice the effort that might make it more likely than th that we get what we actually need. Uh, waiting for the prince to show up is a waste of valuable time. And the waiting distracts us from, from and devalues the hard work we might be doing instead. If you can influence the outcome, do the work. If you can't influence the outcome, ignore the possibility. It's merely a distraction. If you can do something about your situation, do it. If you can't, you know, he calls it a distraction. See, we can, we can influence our outcome as we put in the energy. See, Solomon was a man of action. He used the tools God gave him. We can use the tools God gave us, which are many. It's many. So keep flapping. See, everybody has an expected energy expenditure in order to get their individual need met. That are an Arctic turn, another bird. Um, he migrates between the Arctic and the Antarctic. And he, he travels over 40,000 miles a year <clears throat> in its migratory route. That's 40,000 miles in one year in search of food and females. Yeah, that's a lot of wing flapping. That's a lot of energy. But that's what God designed the Arctic turn to have to do in order to have its need met and to propagate its own species. He doesn't ask humans to do that. And where humans keep falling short, it's time to, to figure out, or if we keep falling short as a human, what do we need to do to get out of our box, out of our situation, so that we can advance? See, they have to work hard to have their need met. And I hate to say it, we have to work hard to have our need met. You know, don't wait for the genie. Do your own work. 
You know, that's the energy it takes on their port for, for God to take care of them. Energy is the ability to get things done. This is how God set up the entire universe, as well as our universe, our journey. See, what is the expected energy requirement for us? Hint, it's usually more than we're currently expending or we would already have that prayer answered. Don't tell anybody I said that. You see, we have to put out more energy than we think. Unfortunately, everything is harder than you think it's going to be. It's all, it's hard to lose weight. It's hard to gain weight. It's hard to quit this or quit. It's hard to do anything, to get a new job, to change a profession. It's hard to get new clients. It's always hard. And like those long flying migratory birds looking for food and that plump squirrel with his amazing tree, expend the necessary energy to find your abundance. Go find your tree. Be the tree. Guide other people to their happy feeding grounds, and I guarantee you'll find yours in the process. As we put out the necessary love and energy to help ourselves and others succeed, we will at attract to ourselves incredible abundance along our amazing and fantastic journey through life. God bless.